So what's new with Chief Irons? I know it's been a couple months since Capcom has showcased him in the new Resident Evil 2 remake, still making him out to be the psychopath who's still on edge when encountering Claire Redfield and Sheriff Birkin in the RPD's underground parking lot. But with the new RE2 remake just around the corner, let's delve into some background with this lunatic and see how he'll play a vital role for the upcoming Resident Evil 2 remake. Anyways, what is up you guys, this is Heydeva, and in this video we'll delve into some of Chief Brian Irons' background, covering aspects like his role in the downfall of the police department, to his corrupt role as chief of police, and into his psychopathic involvement during the T-Virus incident, where we also see some of his shady antics during his time in the RPD. Anyways, before we delve into this character, please feel free to check out my other Resident Evil content on my channel. I'll leave a card on the top right section of your screen so you guys can check it out. So making his debut in the original Resident Evil 2, we encounter Chief Irons for the first time in his office, sitting behind his desk while the dead body of the mayor's daughter was in full display. But seeing him have that dead body already made you question this character immediately, asking him the question as to why he's even keeping a corpse on his desk. But as we play as Claire Redfield in either scenario A or B, we get a quick exposition from Chief Irons, explain how he failed to protect the mayor's daughter, to also letting Claire know that she'll end up just like everyone else, and ending their conversation with his appreciation to his taxidermy collection. It was a rather odd conversation coming from Chief Irons, because we the players can already tell that this person's psyche is already on the brink of insanity, or maybe his antics during his time as chief of police already proved his psychopathic tendencies. But during our playthrough in the original Resident Evil 2, we can find files scattered throughout the precinct where we find out many of Brian Irons' corrupt dealings, ranging from his diary to the various police reports and Chris Redfield's investigation to Chief Irons' background. We quickly discovered that Chief Irons was involved with the downfall of the RPD, where we find out that he's cut communications to and from the outside of the police station, also causing confusion among the remaining police officers, keeping them disorganized which leads them to their eventual deaths. He also had the weapons and ammunition caches scattered throughout the precinct due to the terroristic nature of the events telling the officers that it would prevent the seizures of their supplies. But we all know he did this antic to make sure that the remaining survivors were kept helpless against the hordes of monsters that roam around the police station. It seems like his strategy of trying to keep the remaining survivors from escaping were also dealt with, because Chief Irons was known to cut off the escape routes from inside the RPD station as well. But one of the sickest actions he's made was him hunting down the remaining survivors himself, almost paying homage to his hobby of hunting down animals for his taxidermy collection. This was clearly stated in his diary, that he had a change of heart and that he would start hunting down the survivors instead. An example of this was when he shot an officer named Ed in the back and watched this man die right in front of him. Chief Irons even found it exquisite and beautiful seeing Ed die in pain. This alone already shows his psychopathic and sadistic side. Isn't she beautiful? I was about to stuff her. But anyways, overall, he didn't want to have any survivors remaining, whether they're from inside the precinct or if they're just trying to escape the town. Also, his actions of cutting communications off from the outside world didn't help the situation of Raccoon City, especially with the population already quarantined by the military to prevent the further spread of the infection. Oh, and let's not forget his many dealings and briberies with the Umbrella Corporation, which inadvertently caused the mass spread of the T-Virus throughout the city, allowing Umbrella to do their many illegal activities under the noses of the police, also keeping the experiments of William Birkin under wraps, and turning a blind eye to the events of Resident Evil 1 and the reports that came from the remaining survivors of the Star's Alpha Team. This corrupt and psychopathic human being is something to be bewildered by. This is extenuated when Claire encounters him again in his torture chamber room. <laughs> so you've made it this far. Not bad, girl. Which pretty much sums up his sadistic nature. To think anyone would want a torture chamber room for their illegal dealings is something to be pondering about. But anyways, back to the point. Here, Chief Irons reveals the truth to Claire, telling her about his involvement and bribery with Umbrella, to also giving some exposition about the G-Virus, and to his mindset of everyone is supposed to die in his town. Anyways, so far, I've given a brief history of this character from the original Resident Evil 2, but it makes me wonder how the developers from Capcom will handle Chief Irons in this new Resident Evil 2 remake, because our first glimpse of this character in the new remake was showcased after some gameplay footage of Claire, going toe to toe with the monster is William Birkin. I've been looking everywhere for you, Sherry. Brave little girl, leave your house in the middle of this mess. On the ground, hands behind your head. Seeing his new revamped appearance, glaring at our characters, then seeing him hold Claire under gunpoint, we can quickly assess that this lunatic's tendencies are much more pronounced in this new RE2 remake, keeping our protagonist detained for no apparent reason, where we see him for a share to cuff Claire, and that if she disobeys, then he would kill Claire right in front of her. Okay then, you tie her up now or she dies. But with the ensuing encounter between Claire and Chief Irons, we can quickly see that he is a much more fleshed out character compared to his original Resident Evil 2 counterpart, seeing him much more forward with his dealings and isn't afraid to commit any of the heinous crimes to achieve what he wants, which in this case, forcing Sherry to abandon Claire and follow him to whatever location he wants her to be at. What are you gonna do to her? None of your fucking business. You hurt her, I swear to God, my brother is stars and I will fuck her. 
Dr. Sherry, get over here. What's your name? What's your fucking name? Claire! Sherry, you come with me now, or say goodbye to Claire. I'd really hate to think that he may have some predatory tendencies in his new RE2 Remix version, but his previous iterations have shown him to be otherwise, where he already has a history of being arrested after being suspected of two counts of rape when he was still attending at his university, but also having the tendency to kill young women for his sick leisures. So with this new Remix version of Chief Irons, we can only suspect his motives as to why he would want to keep Sherry so close to him. But if the latter ends to be true, that he was planning on doing harm to the young Sherry Birkin, then as history stands, we'll just have to hope that the events that occurred in the original Resident Evil 2 happens, where we see Brian Irons either implanted with a G embryo and is later torn apart when it finally emerges from his chest. Or when he's caught by the leg and dragged down to the manhole by William Birkin and thrown up in the air while missing half his body. Anyways, going back to his creepy demeanor, it doesn't seem like it ends there because we get a quick clip showing his interaction with Claire when she's in his private collections room. Hello? Good to see you again, Claire. We've got unfinished business. Overall, Chief Irons appears to have a much bigger antagonistic role in this new Resident Evil 2 Remakes version, seeing him much more forward with his psychopathic tendencies where he's already shown to be an obstacle that Claire has to overcome. But with the limited footages that we've seen Chief Irons from the Resident Evil 2 Remakes gameplay trailer, what do you guys think will happen with the sicko and what other surprise do you think he'll provide us players when we finally play this game? So if you guys have any thoughts about this sicko, then please share your opinions about Chief Irons on the comment section down below. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching my quick analysis video what's new with Chief Irons. I hope you guys enjoyed my quick rundown of this character and seeing what we're going to be dealing with in this new Resident Evil 2 remake. Anyways, again, thank you guys so much and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day and this is Hey Deva signing out.